Today, we embark on an unforgettable journey along Portugal's most scenic railway, the Douro Line. Our adventure begins at the fascinating Porto So Bento station and takes us to Piscino, with a late 1960s locomotive and vintage 75 years old cars carrying us through space and time. We will discover the route, the trains, the scenery, schedules, costs and much more. Get ready for a unique experience and come along! Hi and welcome to So Bento train station in Porto's downtown area. Have you ever seen so many people in a train station with no intention of using the trains? That's what happens here and this is why. This historic train station was revealed in 1916 and has garnered international recognition for its stunning architecture and design. It's praised for its ornate ceilings and breathtaking tile panels designed by Jorge Colasso, a renowned tile painter from the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Porto So Bento has been recognized as one of the most stunning and remarkable train stations in the world. Accessible by car, taxi, bus, metros Line D, and on foot, it offers various transportation options for visitors. There are ticket offices, cafes, a CP customer service office, and even a timeout market. The platforms at this station serve as departure points for commuter trains traveling to various destinations and long-distance trains heading north and east. My train today, Interregional number 869, is parked at platform 6 and I have to get inside quickly for there isn't much time before departure. I use the opportunity to show you the interior of the Schindler cars built in 1948 and 1949 by Schindler wagons from Prattel, Switzerland. These cars have a nostalgic feel with curtains on the windows, retro patterns on the seat fabric, and vintage color schemes. Luggage can be stored in the overhead racks and in the vestibules. Unfortunately, there is no bar service available, which can be especially missed on a hot day like today. The method for opening the doors is worth seeing. Isn't it ingenious? There isn't, of course, internet available on board. There is, however, an area for bicycles which I will show you when taking a stroll to the Sorfame car in the front. This was the train's horn and as the journey begins, we say goodbye to the picturesque Porto So Bendo station. Upon departure, we are greeted by the first glimpse of the Douro River, which will accompany us for the majority of our journey. If you're traveling from Lisbon to the Douro Line, Campanhan, our first stop is where you change trains. However, if you take this route, you'll miss out on seeing So Bento Station and the city of Oporto, both of which are worth visiting. Before moving any further, let's learn about today's route. From Campanhan, where we are, we head north for about 8 kilometers before turning east towards the Douro Line. We'll encounter the river again shortly after Pala, a halt that's roughly 70 kilometers or one hour into the trip. The line will then follow the Douro, leading us to Pasino after covering a total distance of 172 kilometers with 21 tunnels and 31 bridges. With all this talk, we got to Ermazin, an iconic station in the outskirts of Porto, often referred to as McDonald Station. Looking at the double canopy, it seems an adequate nickname. Back inside the train, my seat, well, it's a second-class seat from the 1940s, with two armrests, a window, and that's it. These two information posters, the first with historical details about the Douro line and the second detailing the history of these cars are very nice touches. While taking a stroll around the train, I came across the Sorfame car, the one nearer to the locomotive. It has space for 12 bicycles. Other than that, it's a 1970s second-class car with limited amenities, although charming in its own right. There isn't first class on these trains. Finally, we get to the head of the train and spot the Class 1400 in retro livery chosen to haul our train today. The Douro line has a rich history, with portions opening between 1875 and 1887, when the last segment, from Barca d'Alva to the Spanish border, was inaugurated. 
However, in 1985, the line on the Spanish side was closed, diminishing the line's significance. By 1988, the last 28 kilometers on the Portuguese side, from Pacino to the border, were also closed. Recently, efforts to modernize the existing line to Pacino with electrification and new signaling systems have been underway, ensuring that future generations can continue to enjoy the scenic views offered by this historic route. The locomotive hauling us is a Class 1400 built between 1967 and 1969 by Sorfame in Portugal. While they were once commonly seen all over the country, they are now primarily used for shunting duties, track maintenance, and some light freight trains, the Duro line being the only route where they can still be spotted leading passenger services. There are a few of the class spotting this retro livery from the 1960s. Today's journey is a remarkable voyage through both time and space. As we move from one place to another, we also traverse through different eras. While filming this in 2024, it's easy to imagine the exact scene captured 50 years ago. The timeless train, the familiar landscapes, and the railway systems link us to the past. Traveling this route offers more than just sightseeing. It's an opportunity to unwind, find tranquility, and rejuvenate our souls. On this journey, everything moves at a leisurely pace, providing a much-needed chance to slow down and appreciate the present moment. I'm choosing to remain silent for a moment now, enabling you to savor the sights and sounds of the Duro as if you were doing the trip yourself. Have you ever taken this trip before? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. We are now arriving to Regua, an historically important station along the line that previously served as the terminus for the narrow gauge Corgo line, which ceased operations in 2009. Passengers would connect here to the narrow gauge train to Vila Real, and before 1990, also to Vidago, Chaves, and other destinations. As you can see, several remnants of the metric line operation remain to remind us of that not so distant past. Ahead, a Class 592 diesel multiple unit. Several services along the Duro are also operated with trains of this class. And now something unusual happens. Apparently CP needed to transport a broken locomotive from Regua back to Porto so they decided to delay our train a little more in order to incorporate this other Class 1400 in the consist. Our 9 minutes delay, when we arrived, became 21. For those of us who come here just for tourism and sightseeing this isn't an issue. Regular passengers, however, probably don't find it so amusing.
Again underway, I want to address the comments about the pronunciation of station names in my previous video. Due to limitations of my own voice, I use voice generating software, which is challenging to fine tune for two different languages simultaneously. Even in spite of the terrible way the names are narrated, the usage of this software makes the videos much better than if I used my voice. I ask for your understanding and patience regarding this issue and thank you for your support. As we were leaving Regua, my camera fainted from the heat and I had to leave it to cool for a moment before being able to record again. Later in the video, something else will faint from the heat as well. Please bear in mind that it's over 40 degrees Celsius or 105 Fahrenheit today. After Regua, the scenery is even more stunning. The banks of the river are lined with numerous vineyards that continue to produce the famous port wine to this day. Back in the 19th century, the construction of this line was chiefly aimed at facilitating the transport of wine from the production areas along the river to Porto and Gaia, from where it was subsequently exported. With the Douro River alongside treating us to stunning views, let's learn about schedules and prices. There are six daily departures in both directions between Porto and Piscino and many more only up to Regua. It's important to note that not all departures are from Sobento, with some starting at Campanhan. There's a link in the description below to the schedules on CP's website. As for prices, tickets are quite affordable at 14.50 euros one way or 26.10 euros for a return ticket purchased on the day of travel. Please note that this is a regular passenger service and not a touristic train. Pinho, where we are arriving, is a popular spot for tourists, serving as a major hub for those heading to the vineyards. There, visitors can take part in various activities related to wine culture and production. Due to the high number of tourists, CP recently extended a train that used to end at Regua to reach this station. Notice how many passengers get off here. As we start moving again, take a moment to appreciate the station building and the tile panels depicting winemaking related scenes. The infrastructure manager, IP, faces several challenges on this line, one of them being the occasional escarpment collapse, particularly in winter. We pass now, at 10 km per hour, the site of one of these and see its remnants. Efforts are currently underway to prevent future occurrences through preventive consolidation measures. Tua, our next stop, like Regua, was once the starting point of a narrow gauge service, the Tua Line, which used to connect Tua with Braganza, a distance of 134 kilometers. This line ceased operations between Mirandela and Braganza in 1991, and between Tua and Mirandela in 2008. A segment close to here was submerged under the artificial lake created by the Tua Dam. After Tua, the scenery reaches its peak of spectacular beauty in the entire trip from Porto to Piscino.
Do you remember my camera overheating as we left Regua? Well, the same happens to our locomotive, and we stop between Vesuvio and Freso di Numo for it to cool down a little. After around 25 minutes, we resume our trip. Have you been here before? What were your impressions? Do you have any memories that you'd like to share? Leave it all in the comments below. After a very fulfilling day, we find ourselves approaching Pacino, which marks the conclusion of my trip. As we arrive and take a look at the station, I want to thank you for coming along on this journey all the way till the end. Most passengers, like myself, just go in the same train back, the Duro train being a very popular day trip from Porto. First, however, I want to show you the quaint, cozy waiting room of this very well-kept station. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Your support means a lot. Thank you for being here and see you in my next trip.